your your thesis statement or thesis your literature review. Do you have any questions? We get started. Do you have anything that we want to want to talk about? Uh, or concerns? Well, I would like you to to check my my talk my document uh, because I don't know if I'm doing I'm doing well or I'm so. All right. Sign in here. <coughs> Okay. All right, there's a few phrases that I tend to, um, that I would suggest that you avoid. And one of them is it is necessary, it is essential, it is important. Okay. Um, instead, what I would uh, recommend would be to state a, a subject so looking at the key terms that you have what would be a key idea that you want to include here in the main clause of your thesis statement if it is necessary to implement implicit grammar in order to help learners to get those difficulties over so um, here you're stating the problem because English teachers have different uh, perceptions Students' difficulties from the ones they're studying. Uh, all right, so I would start with something. I would start with this subject: uh, implementing implicit grammar, or implicit grammar, or teaching implicit grammar mm -hmm. in the subject of your main clause. Help learners to get. I see. Help learners, uh, and then help learners how, and then help learners in which ways type okay. of thing. Right, so. The reasons or the ways in which they that helping the uh, the learner with teaching implicit grammar that's what you're going to explain in your literature review. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so you're going to be te you're going to be explaining implicit grammar, but it helps them to do these things, or or, or you know it helps them if you want to use that term helps them uh, learn. Uh, you need to explain that in more detail in your literature review. So here you have implicit, explicit grammar, incidental, intentional learning. Is this another section, integrating skills versus teaching skills separately? Teachers' perceptions. Okay, so you have four sections. Mm -hmm. Is it too much? <laughs> so what are uh, teacher perceptions? Mm -hmm. Because I, I have five in, in your comment. You okay, so remember you here, we I, I would avoid yes-no questions. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we want to formulate a question, how do teachers implement implicit grammar activities? Now, you might state here, how do teachers implement incidental versus in intentional learning through implicit grammar? Mm -hmm. For example. Mm -hmm. Or in another question, how do teachers implement <coughs> implicit explicit grammar? Mm -hmm. Right? Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to capture some key ideas from your literature review, bring that into your research questions with the idea that you would then later research those those ideas. See, uh, and this is these are just examples. How do teachers integrate skills or teach skills separately and teach through implicit? See what I mean through implicit grammar. So you might be able to reduce the number of concepts because, for example, you have incidental intentional learning might also be part of implicit explicit. Mm -hmm. You can kind of compare and contrast and discuss those four concepts perhaps in one section. 
Okay. Um, uh, I'm not sure yet about this. I'll have to see how you develop this. Teachers' perceptions. Um, do you feel you have information about? Yes, I have an article, uh -huh. and it says well, it uh, talks about the the perceptions of the students and things like that. So that's why I wanted to to add that topic. All right. No, maybe if it is not. Okay, so we'll leave it. We'll no, but we we'll, we'll leave it the way it is. <coughs> when you finish, hmm? read what you have and ask yourself if there's a different way of describing what you have said what you wrote because um, you might say like um, you're talking about teachers perception so something like uh, misconceptions or misunderstandings that teachers have uh, about the difficulties that students face when learning grammar for example Let's say you talk about misconceptions. They think this, they perceive this, but the students, uh, their difficulties are different, maybe. Let's say that that's like the main idea. Mm -hmm. Then you might go in and rephrase that and say misconceptions. Or, or maybe there's a way that teachers can better understand the students' difficulties. Mm -hmm. So you might state here, understanding uh, the difficulties students face when learning grammar mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. uh, that's a little bit but you know for now just leave it if you as long as you feel you have information go ahead and develop that I those ideas mm -hmm. and then go back to your headings and that's for all of your headings when you finish your uh, literature if you go back and ask yourself okay uh, is the heading really a good description okay. of what I'm saying mm -hmm. and you have you may have to go back and forth look at the the heading and look at how you, you are organizing each section to say, okay, is it logical? Is, what's the? It's almost like a, a small essay even within the, the thesis, right? So it should be uh, coherent in that the organization should either be general to the specific, least important to the most important, theoretical to the practical, etc. Chronologically, based on time, that type of thing. Okay, so um, yeah, just go ahead and continue adding. Uh, take I would revisit your research questions, and what are the perceptions and difficulties? Uh, um, you might want to focus on a how or why question. Again, going back to what we talked about before, you might say, how do teachers better understand the difficulties students have when learning grammar or learning grammar implicitly or something along those lines okay so for for right now um, how do teachers implement and if you can be more specific in this third question how do teachers implement okay I mean that's overall that's what you'll be looking at um, just take a look at your th your literature review when you finish and see if there is a way that we can be more specific. And going back to maybe thinking, how do teachers teach um, even overt covert grammar? If you talk about overt covert grammar um, through incidental learning, I mean, maybe you can kind of combine a few of these key terms. Mm -hmm. Right to try to utilize more of the topics that you have in your literature. Mm -hmm. Obviously, thinking that you can, you know, uh, think about how you're going to collect the data to measure what you are are researching, mm -hmm. and that's something we can work on, obviously. But um, that's kind of the idea. Be careful <coughs> too with your capitalization. Make sure that you always capitalize proper nouns. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. Okay, so how many words do you have so far? Mm. <laughs> or less. Almost. 
Okay. How many? 826. Uh -huh. All right. So, yeah, go ahead and uh, yeah, continue developing your, your literature review. Mm -hmm. And uh, try to finish up by Friday. That's the due date, uh, February 28th. And um, I don't know, do you have any other questions or doubts? That and you what about the other document? About the that is about the steps. Is it um, yeah, is it corrected, but I don't know if the changes I made are correct. correct. <coughs> yeah, so you say here according to what they, the teachers, think students' main problems are. This section here, make sure you have a research question that reflects that. So how do teachers know, so looking at this, how do teachers, um, how do they know that, how do they come to understand the main problems that students face? How do they, uh, because one thing is implementing the grammar activities and another is understanding the students problems so maybe you have a question about how do students or teachers uh, plan how do they plan for uh, implementing grammar errors based on their the issues or problems that they face mm -hmm. so so one <coughs> thing is how they implement it in class and another is how they plan for it how do they they know what to focus on. How do they know, you know, coming from the students, what their difficulties or, or challenges are that they face? Is it only through just their experience in class? And if it is, how how does the teacher plan? Thinking more in terms of like, how do they plan for the next lesson, or how do they plan a unit? Right, and that might even include looking at their lesson plan or talking to them about how they reflect on their own practice. Okay, so in your opinion, it's missing one question related to that? Um, or it yeah, it has to be more focused on that. Yeah, right. Because um, you have a question about how they implement. Maybe you have a question about here. You have what are the perceptions? But change. I would modify this question and ask how do they plan for uh, basically in their planning how do they plan or uh, because the perceptions you're going to be asking them how do they perceive how do you know that students are having problems then based on that okay well how do you plan then what do you do once you know that mm -hmm. so you need a question about that either how do they plan their lessons based on the difficulty students face with regard to grammar okay so one of it would be kind of planning and another would be the implementation okay okay and are you going to check it the whole well the, are you going to check the whole <coughs> text on Friday or yes yes I'll check on the mobile, entire uh, on all the citations like Everything. Uh, if you look in Canvas, mm -hmm. uh, let's go to Thesis Seminar, Outcomes, there's a rubric, Written Thesis. This is the rubric that I'll be using to grade uh, primarily your literature review. This is a complete rubric for the entire research. Mm -hmm. But I'll be looking at grammar, word choice, sentence structure, feel, organization, uh, content, purpose. I won't, it's not so much the quality of the research because that comes at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, the use of references and APA. So basically all these criteria I'll be using all, uh, except for the quality of research, except for this one because that is kind of at the end. When I look at your first draft, I'll add this criteria. Okay, but basically everything else. So I think this rubric, let's see, is, 
picture of you. No, it's not. I'm going to add it right now. Okay, you should now be able to access this rubric for under assignments. If you go to literature review, you should have access now to this uh, rubric. So again, all the criteria, the criteria except for quality of research. This one. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Concerns? No. So, yeah, I work really hard trying to get everything uh, uploaded to Google Drive for Friday. Mm -hmm. And then next week we'll start looking at instrument design and talk about what type of instruments that you need to consider to answer your research questions for your own research. Now we're going to have more time to correct it. Yeah, you'll have time. Uh, in fact, you'll have until the 23rd of May uh, to finish any changes that you need to make to your literature review, but we won't be spending much time talking about it in our tutoring session because we'll, we need to move on to the other processes that we need to look at. So if you have any questions, you don't understand my feedback, Send me an email or ask me, right? But um, and I'll help you clarify any doubts that you have. But we will be kind of shifting our focus more on other aspects of the research. Where where do we find the the comments or I don't know that to use? For example, CA means that. Uh, okay, if you go to announcements, have you have you checked these announcements here? Some of them. All right. Um, try to refer to all of the announcements. Try to, because uh -huh. all of these are really for the whole class. And every week I do kind of a summary mm -hmm. of things. But there's one here that's called Air Code List that I uploaded last Thursday. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. And if you click here and select this link, you should be able to download this and print this out. I think you can view this. Let's see. Okay, you can also view it here inside the document. Okay, so this is going to announcements, and it's called air code list right here. Okay, any other questions? No. All right, Luis, we'll um, hang in there and uh, try to finish up by Friday and. Next week we'll continue on with the uh, design of the instruments. It is about 2,200? Yeah, without the introduction it's about 2,250 words. Okay, with the introduction? Without the introduction. Okay, with, that. with the introduction it's approximately 2,500 words, more or less. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right, Luis, you're welcome. We'll see you later. See you.